Welcome everyone today to our study on the Advent Pharma series, where we are trying to discuss on the productive methods of farming. And yesterday, for those who joined in, we began with how it was in the beginnings in the book of Genesis chapter one and chapter two. And we look throughout the Bible and saw the principles of gardening that used to be there. And uh, we realized that God himself set the system in place, the system wherein there was a, symb a symbiotic relationship between the plants, the animals, and all the uh, all the life forms in the in the atmosphere, or in the soil, or in the environment, and that a relationship needs to be there in order for us to practice good agricultural techniques. And we saw that uh, God really blessed the children of Israel when they continually followed His principle of uh, of gardening. And today we are going to get into where the change came from and how it has been till now when everything has changed and the world is struggling, things are proving to be very difficult. So may we pray as we get into this study. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for giving us opportunity again to come before you. May you enlighten our minds and above all, make us useful in your field of restoring the agricultural methods that are going to help your people to stand true to you during this time of investigative judgment. So be with us in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to begin with sharing my screen. I want to share with us the screen so that we can read together and see what really has been going on since, uh, since um, man began to invent many of the things that are not working according to God's way. Okay, so my enabling screen has not been working. It has been disabled. Screen sharing has been disabled. Let me see if, all right. Now it can work. Um, we are going to look at the Advent Farmer series, the change from the right order. We found that the right order was according to how it was in the beginning, where nature interact with the nature, where nature build nature. Nature will always respond to nature. That has been the principle from the beginning. And we realized that the way we set our farms in a way that makes this system to work our crops, our plants will be strong enough and they will produce strong plants. Our soil will be healthy enough, produce uh, healthy, so healthy plants and then strong people. So we want to see that many changes have been made in this system that God himself set in place. And so in Psalms chapter 11 verses two says, for Lord, the wicked bend their bow they make ready their arrow upon the strings that they may privately shoot at the upright in heart. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? This has been the question forever. We are seeing associations and groups and cooperatives and unions and many, many other confederacies being put in place to destroy God's people and to go away from the plan of God. Isaiah chapter 8 says, verses 9, associate yourself, all ye people, 
and you shall be broken in pieces and give you all your of far countries. Guard yourself and you shall be broken in pieces. Guard yourself and you shall be broken in pieces. Take counsel together and it shall come to naught. Speak the word and it shall not stand for God is with us. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of these people saying, say ye not all confederacy to all them to whom these people shall say a confederacy, neither fear ye their fear nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread. So this is the beginning of fear in the world. Fear has been used in the world to control people, to introduce beliefs and policies and to make sure that God's people are subjected to affliction. So for those who are joining in, we are in the class of change from the forms of agriculture that was initiated in the beginning and, uh, and the is results. So let us be ready to listen and to read more because I'm going to read a lot of history here to give us a foundation of what has been happening. Now we want to see that the change of things from the old methods of farming that God himself has set in place began uh, during the green revolution. And here we have the Rockefellers initiative that has been working throughout many, many years. The Rockefellers green revolution began in Mexico and was spread across Latin America during the 1950s and 1960s. Shortly thereafter, backed by John D. Rockefeller's networks across Asia, it was introduced in India and elsewhere in Asia, the revolution was a veiled effort to gain control over food production in key target countries of the developing world. Promoted in the name of free enterprise market efficiency against alleged communist inefficiency. So uh, the system that the Rockefellers brought was to drive people away from uh, the communist idea of owning land together and men can, uh, can do their own stuff. But here comes a system that was going to change the old methods of farming. And the great confederacies were being put together so that there can be a change and a monopolization of agricultural system in the world. In the aftermath of World War II, with Germany's LG Farben a bombed out heap of rubble, American chemical companies emerged as the world's largest. The most prominent companies, DuPont, uh, uh, the, the Dow Chemical, the Monsanto, the Hercules powder, and other faced a glut of nitrogen production capacity, which they had built up at US taxpayer expense to produce bombs and shell for the war effort. So during the World War II, this, uh, this group of people came together so that they can produce ammunition um, or weapons that were going to be used during the war. So the gunpowder was being introduced, uh, was being used and produced, but there was a lot of, uh, of these remains that were being piled up. And so they came up together to find a way in which uh, this uh, nitrogenous production can be used instead of being laid waste. And so the birth of inorganic fertilizer industry began an essential chemical for making bombs and explosives. Nitrogen was a prime component of TNT and other high explosives. Nitrogen could also form the basis for nitrate fertilizer. The chemical industry developed the idea of creating large new markets for their nitrogen in the form of fertilizers, ammonia nitrate, anhydrous ammonia for both domestic US agriculture 
and for export. So it is between uh, 1945 to 1950s when these companies came together to make begin making inorganic fertilizer that can be used in the garden to increase production. And then nitrogenous fertilizer industry developed. The nitrogen fertilizer industry was part of the powerful lobby of the Rockefeller Standard Oil Cycle, which by the end of the war included DuPont, uh, Dow Chemicals, and Hercules Powder, among others. So this a Rockefeller family also were honing uh, large or huge uh, depots of oil. And also they were initiating a lot of pro projects of making of fertilizer. And so they had to come together to make sure that they bring an initiative that is going to bring them into a global honor and uh, global uh, uh, knowledge. The global market of the new agrichemicals after the war also solved the problem of finding significant new markets for the American petrochemical industry, as well as the grain cartel. A group of four to five companies, then including Kajil, Continental Grain, Bunge, and ADM, the largest grain traders were American and their growth was a product of the development of special hybrid seeds through the spread of the Green Revolution in the 1960s and 1970s. Agriculture was in the process of going global and the Rockefeller Foundation was shaping that process of agribusiness globalization. So uh, we find some initiatives being brought forth to change the normal order of agriculture we find the grain cartel beginning to produce a lot of grains that are hybridized and the petrochemical industry are also put in place to produce the herbicides and other petro, uh, uh, petro pesticides. And then special hybrid seeds were introduced and they termed it or they were doing this through a process called agribusiness globalization. Then with a monopoly on the agricultural chemicals and on the hybrid seeds, American agribusiness giants were intent on dominating the global market in agricultural trade. After all, as Kissinger noted in the 1970, he says that if you control the food, you control the people. Governments from the developing sector to the European economic community, the Soviet Union and China soon depended on the powerful grain cartel companies to provide the needed grains and food products to maintain their political stability in times of bad harvest. So you find that there was a great crisis of food insecurity. And in that loophole, uh, these great monopolistic uh, corporations came together and they were dominating the global market in agricultural trade, producing food uh, and selling and also finding way of uh, selling their petrochemicals. Then truly there was genuine US government concern to contain communist and nationalist movement in the developing world uh, during the 1960s by offering food aid in the form of privately sponsored agricultural inputs. So what happened is that the farmers were being duped and people were being duped. They were offering food reliefs and also sponsoring agricultural input so that people can buy at a subsidized cost. However, the combination of US government aid and the techniques being developed in the name of green revolution will present a golden opportunity for the influence policy making cycle around Rockefeller and their emerging agribusiness group to turn that concern to their advantage. So the agribusiness policy that was being produced, that agriculture for business can be used to actually bring more food to the people. So farmers were being lobbied to make sure that they buy this idea. So Nelson Rockefeller worked hand in glove uh, 
in glove on agriculture with his brother John D. the third, who had set up his own agriculture development council in 1953, one year after he had founded the population council. Now you're going to understand what really this population council was all about. The focus of the agriculture development council was Asia, while Nelson concentrated on his familiar turf in Latin America. They shared the common goal of long-term catalyzation. So they were going to have a long-term catalyzation where a group of people are able to control the agricultural system and production in the world. And so of world agriculture and food supplies under their corporate hegemony or territory. The motivational, the motivation behind the secret tax force had come from John D. Rockefeller and the Rock the core idea went back to the 1939 Council on Foreign Relations, War and Peace Studies. Project leader, Isaiah Bowman, they say that global depopulation and food control were to become US strategic policy under Kissinger. So this Rockefeller Population Council was aimed at depopulation agenda by using food as that leeway of uh, bringing down or cutting down the population. And now we begin having wheat hybridization or the grain hybridization beginning to, uh, to be put in place. So the seeding system that God had put in place in the beginning was being changed that let, uh, we should not actually, that which God has bind together, let no man separate. When the Rockefeller Foundation Norman's Bolog came into Mexico in 1950s. He worked on hybrid forms of rust resistant wheat and hybrid corn types, not yet the genetically engineered projects to come several decades later. So the first thing that was being developed by the Rockefeller Depopulation um, Council and also the Green Revolution Movement project that they were running was to create way for a genetically engineered projects later on. And they began with hybridization. Hybridization is where you cross pollinate the plants and you suppress the expression, uh, expressive, uh, expressive gene. It means that if there is a gene that makes that plant to continue uh, progenate or to continue producing year in, year out, that factor is reduced or lowered so that the hybrid seeds are not able to produce in its strength as it was during the time you bought it. So we were behind the first set of agricultural and biological science. However, the Rockefeller group was pursuing a calculated strategy through its green revolution during the 1950s and 1960s. So you see, during 1939, a change or a shift from the right order had been picking in, in small bits. And then the idea of curbing food insecurity came in by the hybridization technology. The heart of his strategy was to introduce modern agriculture methods to increase crop yields. And so went the argument thereby to reduce anger and lessen the threat of potential communists, subversion of Hungary and ruling nations, it was the same seducing argument used years later to sell its gene or gene revolution. That is the hybridization and the GMO project that was going to come in. And so they came in with this gap to, uh, to, to, to seduce people that we are trying to increase the yields of the grains. The Green Revolution was the beginning of global control over food production, a process made complete with the gene uh, revolution several decades later. The same companies, not surprisingly, were involved in both as were the Rockefeller and other powerful US together to control the food system. 
what really gave it power to move on more? In 1966, the Rockefeller Foundation was joined by the considerable financial resources of the food of the Ford Foundation, another US private tax exempt foundation, which enjoyed intimate ties to the US government, intelligence and foreign policy establishment. Together with the Ford resources, the Rockefeller Foundation Green Revolution went into higher gear. So the Ford Foundation uh, pumped in a lot of money to make sure that this project of green revolution and of bringing fertilizer and hybrids and genetically engineered foods and changing the, 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 the mode of, of cultivation and tillage was to be put in place. So that year of 1966, the government of Mexico, along with the Rockefeller Foundation, set up the International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center the center focused its work on a wheat program, which originated from breeding studies begun in Mexico in 1940s by the Rockefeller Foundation. So the International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center was to bring up uh, corn types or maize types or wheat breeds that are going to be uh, to increase yield and production and also to be able to supply uh, the, the population with enough food. And so the corn industry, the, 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 the seeds of maize began, uh, they began to tamper with it. The wheat began to be tampered with. You know that the first wheat was the acorn and then we have the spelt and we have the, the kamut and all those originals a species of wheat had been tampered with. So they formed the wheat that we have today, the short, uh, short-shaped uh, short or sized uh, wheat that takes short time. It produces the long, uh, the short grains, but producing abundance and the sugar content was increased so that uh, people can find it tasty to enjoy because these were the most basic foods that were being consumed by many people. Now, what was the ultimatum continuum of this? What was the specific policies that were put in place to continue this agenda? Their efforts in food and agricultural received a boost that same year when US President Lyndon Johnson announced a drastic shift in US food aid to develop countries under PL 480, namely that no food aid will be sent unless a recipient country and uh, had agreed to preconditions, which included agreeing to the Rockefeller Agenda for Agriculture Development, stepping up their population control programs and opening their doors to interested American investors. So, many developing countries could not get uh, these benefits uh, of this uh, revolution that was speaking in. They would not receive food. And it was during a crisis time that the global food production had reduced. And so they say that any country who does not receive the agribusiness and the green revolution uh, motion will not be able to receive uh, enough aid. And also, if you accept, you have to accept population control programs like birth controls, agenda, uh, or, or plans. You have to accept uh, the food hybridization and genome changing uh, models. And also, you must also allow the investors from America to come into your country to make sure that they continue the project. So in 1970, the Rockefeller Norman Boloff uh, won the Nobel Prize. Interestingly enough, it was not for bio biology, but for peace. The same prize Henry Kissinger was to receive several years later. Both men were also protégés of the influential Rockefeller family. So many, many, men became like puppets, the protégés, uh, the puppets that were trying to 
make sure that these agendas are pushed on. The Rockefeller was, was given a prize for mobilizing and globalizing the agricultural system to aid people. Yet it was having a hidden agenda to destroy economy. It reminds me of Daniel chapter eight verses 25 and 26 that with this craft and working, telling people that they are, uh, they need peace, it shall destroy many. So these are plans that change the mode of um, the mode of agriculture that had been set in place by God Himself. In reality, the Green Revolution introduced U.S. agribusiness into key developing countries under the cover of promoting crop science and modern techniques. So, the new wheat hybrids in Mexico required modern chemical fertilizers, mechanized tractors and other farm equipment, and above all, they required irrigation, which meant pumps driven by oil or gas energy. So look at this, how people are so selfish. So they wanted to promote this agenda by promoting crop science and modern techniques, and it had to be accepted in most of our education institutions. And also, the modern chemical fertilizer were to be introduced and gigantic mechanized tractors were also to be introduced to ensure that large farms are brought into cultivation. The Green Revolution methods were, were suitably, uh, suitable only in the richest crop areas and it was deliberately aimed at the richest farmers, reinforcing all semi-feudal latifundist divisions between wealthy landowners and poor peasant farmers. So in Mexico, the new wheat hybrids were all planted in the rich, newly irrigated farm areas of the Northeast. All input from fertilizer to tractors and irrigation required petroleum and other input from advanced industrial supplies, supplies in the United States, oil and agriculture joined forces under the Rockefeller ages. So uh, we find that now large chunks of land were being uh, put in place. But which kind of people were able to, uh, to actually afford this system, this new revolution? It was the rich. So the poor were forced to move to areas that um, they can be controlled. And they, uh, they, 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 offer, uh, um, uh, they, they offer labor to this, uh, this large, uh, of uh, large plantations. So what was the strategic training to make sure that this agenda is, uh, is fulfilled? So in 1960, the Rockefeller Foundation, John D. Rockefeller III's Agriculture Development Council and the Ford Foundation joined forces to create the International Rice Research Institute. So they begin to introduce research institutes in Los Banos, the Philippines, that is where the center was. By 1971, the Rockefeller, um, uh, the Rockefeller Foundation, uh, International Rice and Research Institute, along with their Mexico-based International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center, and two other Rockefeller and Ford Foundation created international research centers. The UTA for Tropical Agriculture, Nigeria and IRRI for rice, Philippines combined to form a global consultative group on international agricultural research. So people are pushing together, pulling together to make sure that the change is realized. So this group was shaped at a series of private conferences held at the Rockefeller Foundation Conference Center in Bellagio, Italy. Key participants at the Bellagio talks were the Rockefeller Foundation, George Harrer, Ford Foundation, Forest Hill, Robert Mike Namara of the World Bank, and Maurice Strong, the Rockefeller's Family International Environmental Organizer, who, as a Rockefeller Foundation trustee, organized the UN Earth Summit in Stockholm in 1972. So things are building up slowly. Changes are being made to ensure maximum impact. The CGIL 
Do you in the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, the FAO, the UN Development Program, UNDP, and the World Bank, thus through a carefully uh, planned leverage of its initial funds, Rockefeller by the beginning of the 1970 was in a position to shape global agriculture policy. So this shaping was taking place by planning organizations coming together, the UN coming together, the World Food Organization coming together, the US, uh, uh, United States Agricultural Department coming together to make sure that this thing is, uh, is achieved. The World Agribusiness System, hybridization system, and actually providing market for the petrochemical and uh, herbicide and pesticides, and all those uh, inorganic fertilizers. So financed by General Rockefeller and Ford Foundation study grants, the CGIAR saw to it that leading third world agricultural scientists and agronomists were brought to the US to master the concepts of modern agribusiness production in order to carry it back to their homeland. In the process, they created an invaluable network of influence for US agribusiness promotion in those countries, all in the name of science and efficient free market agriculture. So changes begin make, made through the uh, through bringing uh, the de la cream or those who have uh, those who have graduated from the universities in in the top universities in every nation to US to benchmark for this system so that they can apply it back to their country. So agribusiness promotions are being made and they they introduced agricultural science. They in, they introduced the agricultural business and the food management systems. They introduced uh, the biotechnology uh, uh, continuums or, 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 or caucus, the meetings where people can come together to learn and go and spread it back. So John Rockefeller's Agricultural Development Council also deployed US university professors to select Asian universities to train a new generation of scientists. The best scientists will then be selected to be sent to the United States to get their uh, doctorate in agricultural agriculture sciences. And coming out of the American universities will follow the precepts close to the Rockefeller's outlook on agriculture. This carefully constructed network was later to prove crucial in the Rockefeller Foundation's subsequent strategy to spread the use of genetically engineered crops around the world. So you see what this system does. It takes the people and these people are trained and taught these better methods as they state so that they can be able to go and produce it, reproduce it in their countries. As a result, it was going to spread the use of genetically engineered crops around the world. So through brainwashing in a widely new re read uh, handbook by Arthur Moshe, executive director of the Rockefeller Agricultural Development Council insisted on teaching peasants to want more for themselves. So they, pro they, they, they actually fit, fitted the mind of wanting more, covetousness. They were to be urged to abandon collective habits and get on with the business of farming. Rockefeller, uh, it says, uh, the Rockefeller, so Rockefeller Moshe called for extending educational program for women and building youth clubs to create more demands for store bought goods. He argued that the affections of husbands and fathers for their families will make them responsive to these desires and drive them to work harder. Of course, they will have to take out loans to invest in all this new technology, trying them even more to the new market economy. So you see how this was made. Farmers were taught to abandon collect collective habits and have the mind of business. So they were now to introduce things that are going to make their production higher. But I tell you, it was a brainwashing because the normal system that was there 
was working effectively. And, uh, and by the way, a lot of food was being produced then than it is being produced today before the use of the inorganic system of farming. So the decentralization began with a target. How was it? One major effort of the Green Revolution was to depopulate the countryside of peasants. So in the rural districts where people stay was to be depopulated by introducing large chunks of land so that these people can go to slums in the cities and then they be put in want so that they come to this plantation to work so that they can get money. What was the aftermath of this green revolution? So when the self-promotion around the green revolution died down, the true results were quite different, quite different from what had been promised. They promised food in food security, large production of food, good health. But what was it? Problems had arisen from indiscriminate use of the new chemical pesticides, often with serious health consequences. The monoculture cultivation of new hybrid seeds varieties decreased soil fertility and yields over time. The first results were impressive double or even triple yield for some crops such as wheat and later corn in Mexico, but that soon died. So this, the soil hygiene had been affected. The yield have been affected. The soil microbiota had been affected. The soil uh, covering or dressing had been affected. And so the soils were dead. They had to depend on the system to make sure that the production continues. The Green Revolution was typically accompanied by large irrigation projects, which often included World Bank loans to construct huge new dams and flood previously settled areas and fertile farmland in the process. Also, super wheat produced greater yield by saturating the soil with large amounts of fertilizer per acre. The fertilizer being the product of nitrous and petroleum commodities controlled by the Rockefeller dominating seven sisters, major oil companies. So it was being in business rather than helping people. So huge quantities of, of herbicides and pesticides were also used, creating additional markets for the oil and chemical giants. As one analyst put it in effect, the green revolution was merely a chemical revolution. So you see, it was not the green revolution, green to mean uh, nature or agriculture, plants, forests, trees, crops. It was not meaning that. It was meaning chemical revolution. The chemical farming began. And so the system was deteriorating and humans were becoming weaker and weaker. And no point, at no point could developing nations pay for the huge amounts of chemical fertilizer and pesticides. They will get the credit courtesy of the World Bank and special loans by Chase Bank and other large New York banks backed by US government guarantees. Agricultural finance cooperatives were created, applied in a large number of developing countries. Those loans went mostly to the large land owners for the smaller peasants the situation worked differently. Small peasant farmers could not afford the chemicals and other modern inputs and had to borrow money. Initially, various government programs tried to provide some loans to farmers so that they could purchase seeds and fertilizer. So just imagine these people, we have come to a time that we cannot produce our own seeds. We have to depend on a system and loans and unions and one acre fund, you call them the buyer association that was initially Monsanto Association, all are coming together and giving grants and loans to people. And they try to cover you, give you insurance for this, but they are robbing you of your health. This has changed the system of farming for a long, long time. So farmers who could not participate in this kind of program had to borrow from the private sector because of the exorbitant interest rates 
For informal loans, many small farmers did not even get the benefit of the initial higher yields. After harvest, they had to sell most of it, not all of their produce to pay off loans and interest. They became dependent on money lenders and traders and often lost their land, even with the soft loans from government agencies, growing subsistence, grow crops, gave way to the production of cash crops. So that is where we are. You think you have money, yet you don't have money. It looks so nice, a system, but it is robbing you of a lot of things that God has put in place. The Green Revolution also introduced new machines for land preparation. Most notably was the so-called power tiller or tackle tiller. This machine, which Pardoned the rice paddy soil, also destroyed much of the natural soil structure, but it was very efficient in doing that. Yesterday, we learned that the soil need not to be disturbed much because if you do deep tilling, you expose the good bacteria and you bury deep the, the good humus. And so your soil will be dead. So it was in God's plan that when we have the compost laid on the soil, the manure laid on the soil, the soil is able to be protected. And when you are planting, you just need to plant. You don't need to dig oftenly so that you can be able to plant. But the system chain that they dig deep the soil, they turn the topsoil down, and then you, they give you the fertilizers to plant and give you the seed to plant. We don't have seed progression so uh, uh, this far. Now, this is what was happening. Another crucial aspect driving the interest of US agribusiness companies was the fact that the Green Revolution was based on proliferation of new hybrid seeds in developing markets. One vital aspect of hybrid seeds was their lack of reproductive capacity. So the hybrid seed cannot reproduce. Hybrids that are built in protection against multiplication. Unlike normal open pollinated species whose seed gave yields similar to its parents, the yields of the seed born by hybrid plants was significantly lower than that of the first generation. So you see change in the seed. The seed system, God said in Genesis chapter one, verses 29 that, tree yielding seed, fruit yielding seed, half bearing seeds are the ones we need to plant and propagate. So hybrid seed patenting began that declining yield characteristic of hybrids meant farmers must normally buy seed every year in order to obtain high yield. Moreover, the lower yield of the second generation eliminated the trade in seed that was often done by seed producers without the breeder's authorization. It prevented the redistribution of the commercial crop seed by middlemen. If the large multinational seed companies were able to control the parental seed lines in house, no competitor or farmer will be able to produce the hybrid. The global concentration of hybrid seeds patents into a handful of giant seed companies led by Pioneer Hybrid and Monsanto Decal laid the ground for the later GMO seed revolution. And so we see changes have been taking place until now we come to a point that our systems are completely changed. And they even bring uh, policies that if you are found using the local or manure or compost, you are in for an arrest. New tough bills being created to criminalize those who use animal manure everywhere. There are things taking place that the, the, the new method of farming should be continued at the expense of the lives and the expense of the health of many people. So just to end, agribusiness and the Green Revolution went hand in hand. They were part of a grand strategy which included Rockefeller Foundation financing, of research for the development of genetic alteration of plants a few years later. So Henry Kissinger reported 
declared one day that if you control oil, you control nations. If you control food, you control people. That is where we are. If we cannot go back and study the old tricks of farming, then in the near future, we are going to lose our lives and lose all our crops and seeds. It is time to preserve seeds. It is time to pro uh, propagate these new seeds and to study the good plannings of our farms so that we cannot be affected. Remember that currently as we live, even the plants that we have, we can take them in the form, we can take chemicals in the form of food. A lot of biotechnology is taking place in the name of agricultural science to, um, to make sure that people are detoxified, people are tox intoxicated and endangered day by day. In PK 184.2, it says that for want of food and raiment, the devil will have the whole world under his dominion. And this is the trick that is being put in place. Judgment is laid off and there is no, uh, there is none for the salvation. It is very far from the people right now. It is because of the sin of people men not wanting to follow the laws of God, that we continue to die and to lose our lives. For the medical missionaries of these days, our only safety is to go back to the right agricultural system. Because we cannot be able to recover diseases, chronic diseases or ailments, if we don't use the right and proper methods. At the same time, anarchy is seeking to sweep away all law, not only divine, but human. The centralizing of wealth and power, the vast combination for the enriching of the few at the expense of the rich, expense of many, the combination of the poorer classes for the defense of their interests and claims, the spirit of unrest of riot and bloodshed, the worldwide dissemination of the same teachings that led to the French Revolution, all are tending to involve the whole world in a struggle similar to that which converts the world. There is an, an urgent call for hygienic gardeners, hygienic seed preservers, and all of us should engage in this. This is the true foundation of medical missionary work. And also to make sure that our, reprodu our, 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 our reproduction of the seeds and the plants are so fine that many people can find her. May God help us. I want us to pray and then I give us chance. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this educative forum. We thank you for enlightening us. The world is in chaos, but you need our people are going to stand as a bridge. So help us Lord to be in this bridge, uh, to be a people who are taking part in breaching that gap that has been put in place. Help us this day we ask in Jesus name, amen.